Proverbs chapter 13 tonight. I don't know how far we're going to get. I don't know. Everybody knows what I've been through this week. I'm not going to try to make a big deal out of that. Uh, But, you know, I wish I'd had more time to spend with the text than I did, but I didn't. So let's just plug in and see what we got. How about that? Does that work for everybody? Father, we yield to you as we look into your word. We pray that you'd cause the scriptures to open up to us, Lord, that they would change us, that they would help us, that they would bless us so that we can be a blessing to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You know the hardest word, I will say one thing, you know the hardest word, and it shouldn't have taken me by surprise, but you know the hardest word to say with this new dental work, you know what the hardest word is to say? Jesus. that That makes sense, doesn't it? That the hardest thing for me to say would be Jesus. Yeah, I got to learn how to do that. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 1. Uh, this is going to be like chapter 12 was. This is going to be a springboard for a lot of things in this chapter. Uh, but anyway, let's see what it says. Verse 1 says, A wise son heeds his father's instruction, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. Now, now, that works, and that has a lot of meaning, and that's good to learn from. That's good for correction and all the things that Paul told Timothy. It's good, just like it is, but that's really not what that says in Hebrew, and, 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 and look, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm some expert or whatever, and I could be off a little bit on this, but the nearest that I could come to what's being said in Hebrew here was that, you do, did you notice that heeds is in italics? Or, or whatever your NASB says, that it, you notice that word's in italics? So that got me curious. So I got to hunting down to see what was actually said in Hebrew, and it is a, or the son of wisdom is born of his father's correction. Now look at the contrast. The contrast is, is that In contrast to that, okay, uh, the son of wisdom or the child of wisdom. In this case, it's talking about a male, but, you know, we know the women didn't really count back then and all that, whatever. I'm not trying to get into all that. But the son, a son of wisdom is born. That word born uh, is kind of like a tree that bores fruit. It produces. So a son of wisdom is the product He's born, he's made, he's created, he's produced from his father's chastening, from his father's correction, from his father's teaching, from his father's instruction. Does that make sense to everybody? That's what's actually being said. And when I saw that, I got excited about this. I thought, well, that's something, that's more. And I like more. More is better. Contrast that, but a scoffer, everybody know what a scoffer is? Nobody knows what a scoffer is? I'm not asking you for the definition, but does everybody understand what a scoffer is? You should. You've all been one at some point in your life. Then I, I don't, you know. Jesus saves. I don't believe that mess. It's kind of like a Harari gets on there. That, 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 that Jesus stuff is fake news. That's a scoffer. One who goes against, discounts the word of God, the good news of God, that God redeems, that God saves, and the person who, Scott, and I've done it, I wasn't interested, rejected it. I've done it in a lot of other areas, too, did it today. Went to pick up the truck. <laughs> they didn't do that stuff the way I would have. This is undone, that's undone, and that's not right, and this ain't right. And so I'm growling and grumbling, and I remember Brian's teaching this morning, and I'm like, wait a minute, man. This is their world. It's their world. How many of you know what the cause of anger and frustration and upset and anxiety is? How many of you know? If, if you're my friend... If you're involved in my life, and anyway, you've heard me say it a million times probably. What's the cause of anger? There's only one. If you're angry, what caused it? 
unrealistic expectations. I, I've told my wife that a hundred thousand times. I had to listen to my own advice today. It took me to getting in the truck by myself and getting out of the crowd at Cracker Barrel before I started hearing the Lord speaking to me. What are you doing? What is this all about? Why are you so upset? You've been in this place three years. Why would you think it would be any different? Because a wise son heeds. You see what I'm saying? A son of wisdom is born of correction, right? A man shall, verse 2, um, a man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth. But the soul of the unfaithful feeds on violence. A man shall eat, feed, be sustained. What was it Jesus told Peter? Brian, you said it this morning. Do you love me? Yeah. Well, then feed my sheep. Now, look at what we're talking about here. Look at the contrast to get it. Now, I'm going somewhere here. Look at the contrast. A man shall eat well. That word actually is each. It means a servant. A servant shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the unfaithful feeds on violence. Now, the contrast is the unfaithful and the servant. Now, the servant shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth. Now, does that mean that, what's that mean? I, I was trying to think about this yesterday when I was going through this. And I don't care how far we get here tonight. I, I, I just, I just want to kind of be free to talk about this. stuff. But I thought, how am I going to explain this? How can I illustrate this? How can I even understand this? How can I apply this? And it's just like this. I learned this principle when I was here at Calvary House that I needed to submit to authority. I needed to submit to the authority that God had placed over me, which at that time was Brian. But that, I needed to submit to that authority so I could learn how to submit to the authority of God. So that I could heed the correction of the Father and be the son of wisdom. Okay, okay. so, so now we've grown and we've matured and everything like this. And it looks something like this. Okay, so every morning... Uh, I, when I took this job over here, this is what the Lord gave me to provide for myself. And every morning I'm expected to call in, tell them where I'm at. Then I'm going to go say I'm, I'm midway. I'm going to go. I'm going to unload the freight. I'm going to unsecure the freight. I'm going to unload the freight. I'm going to get the paperwork signed. All these are my responsibilities. Now, I can call in with an attitude. And I have. Now, how much more prone do you think that the person that's in charge of giving me my productivity is going to be willing to give because they got loads on the board here and they go this is the best one and this was the worst one and they range in motion and if I call in but I'm the scoffer that soul feeds on violence I'm moving down that board <laughs> A man will eat well from the fruit of his mouth. Okay, let's take this somewhere else. From the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's coming out of the mouth is from the overflow of what's in the heart. Jesus said, if the light in you is good, then it'll change the way that you see the world around you. It'll also change what's coming out of this trap. And so by the fruit, by the produce, by what's coming out, by what's flowing, overflowing from my heart, if the light in me is good, then it's going to be better coming out. I can eat well, I can feed well, I can be sustained well by that if my heart is good. Now... Pause. Let's get realistic here. Glenn David, if you've been anywhere near my family in my life, you know what it means when you hear both those names. Does not have a good heart. 
But Jesus got a hold of my life and he won't let me go. You see what I'm talking about? If the light, if the light of the world has come into your heart and that light is good from the overflow of that, you'll speak and from the fruit of that, you'll eat well. But the soul of the What's your NASB say, Brian? Uh, three, I think. Uh, two, two. But the soul of the 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 desire of the treacherous. Mine says the soul of the unfaithful. Unfaithful. Uh, one of the manifestations of the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, is faithfulness. In Greek, which is what the New Testament is written in, faith and faithfulness are the same word. They're interchangeable. A person of faith should be a person of faithfulness. And I'm not just talking about to churchy things or religious things or that kind of thing. I'm talking about in everything because if the light in you is good then you'll eat well by the fruit of your mouth. But if your soul is unfaithful, then Proverbs is telling us that that soul is feeding on violence. Jesus told us that, uh, that, 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 that in the last days it would be like the days of Noah when God said the heart of man was wicked every day and because of their violence in the world, he was going to destroy it. Does anybody strongly disagree that we're working back towards that again? Do you see that prophetic statement of the Lord happening in your midst? If your soul is not feeding faithfully, on Jesus, on the gospel, on the good news, on the word of God. If we're not that son that's born of wisdom, the heeding the father's instruction. If we're not born of that instruction and being faithful to that instruction. If we're not heeding to that instruction. If you reject love, what's left? If you reject peace, what's left? Violence. It's their world, right? You have one hope of getting out of their world. His name is Jesus. I'm practicing. Jesus. 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 That's the hope of being redeemed from this fallen world where their souls are feeding on by. Now, I'm not judging, pointing fingers. I've lived that way more years of my life than I have living faithfully for, to the light. But we will feed on the violence if we don't feed on the light and on the peace and on the joy that's promised through the provision of the cross. We need to get this. We've dismissed this. We've winked at it and shuffled our feet at the Word of God for all of our whole lives. And generation after generation after generation have discounted the truth of Scripture. We haven't heeded our Father's instruction. It's not sustainable. Verse 3, he who guards his mouth preserves his life. But he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. Now, (laughs) 
this doesn't mean that we should be quiet and sit on a bench over here with our backpack waiting on the rapture doing our Bible studies in private and not and not speaking out the truth, the gospel message, the hope of the world. That doesn't mean keep your mouth closed. Guard your mouth. How do you guard your mouth? This, he said it, he said it Jesus said it in John chapter 3. Uh, he who believes is not condemned, but he who does not believe has been condemned already from the Garden of Eden because he's rejected the light. The light's come into the world. If you reject the light, then the overflow of the darkness in our heart will flow from our wide open trap. Don't think that you can be so disciplined <laughs> What was it James said about the tongue? It's full of poison. Like a big ship has a tiny rudder and it decides where the big ship. I got a big ship here. Ship getting bigger. <laughs> this tiny rudder is the evidence what's coming out of this hole right here is the evidence of what's going on in here. If I have any hope of guarding my mouth and preserving my life, it will be because I have opened my arms wide and said, Jesus, come in. Let your spirit lead me, not the flesh, not the world, not Babylon. May I walk according to your spirit. And preserve my life. You can't control this. But you got some control over this. The love of God was demonstrated on Calvary, on the cross on Calvary. Jesus beckoned us. Come to me, all you who labor. Are heavy burdened? Are you laboring to get through each day? Are you burdened? I mean, you just can't find the satisfaction and fulfillment that you're looking for, no matter how hard you try. You're scrambling around in the world and the flesh. And come to me. I'll give you rest. For your soul, you know, soul, heart's interchangeable in Hebrew, right? Soul, heart, mind, inner man, software, whatever you want to say. Come to me. All you who labor, heavy laden, because you're burdened. And you can't even put your finger on it to decide why. Come to me, Jesus said. And I'll give you rest for your soul. And I'll fill your heart with goodness. From the good news. From the spirit, the gift of the Father. Change what's on the inside is the only way to change what comes out in the overflow. Preserve your life. Let him in. Change the light that's in us. Because if you don't, You're going to have destruction because you can't help it but open your lips wide. Can't help it. <clears throat> Four, the soul, the heart, the inner man, the mind of a lazy man, a slothful man, man who you ever been to that place where you just quit caring? They call it 
I mean, they got all kind of clinical names for it now. They call it depression. They call it anxiety. They call it this, that, the other. I was bipolar and borderline schizophrenic and had a whole laundry list full of things. I'm not saying that these things are non-existent. I'm saying in my life, my personal experiences, I got papers over here in the judge's office in the courthouse that says that I'm a danger to myself and society because this up here ain't right. And when I got honest with God, everything changed. Jesus got a hold of my life and it won't let me go, right? The soul, the mind, the heart, the inner man of the lazy man, of the slothful man, of the sluggard, I believe. Ron, does yours say sluggard? The sluggard, we had a description of the sluggard. The sluggard, he rolls around on his bed like the turning of a knob, it says. His sluggard also reaches his hand in the dish, but he won't even bring the chicken leg to his mouth. It's, we're talking about that. You know, you can't be that in the kingdom. We've gotten lazy in the church over the generations and justified it. It's time to get up off of our bums and start serving in the kingdom. Because if you're not serving in the kingdom, you're serving in the other kingdom. Jesus said, if you're not for me, you're against me. Not much gray area in that. The soul of the slothful man, of the man who don't care, of the man who's done gotten depressed, of the man who's not interested, the man who is, what's the word I'm looking for? <sighs> Indifferent. It desires. And has nothing. I, I, I wanted and I wanted and I wanted and I wanted and I chased and I pursued and I tried this and that and this and that. And I tried to medicate the pain of it away and all. I ended up with nothing. When I came here, that didn't immediately change. I finally had to, had to get a little revelation from the Lord that it was one thing that's not going to change. And that's that I'm never going to stop wanting i got to be satisfied with wanting. Because my flesh is going to want and crave and desire and long for and scream for and holler for. I want this, I want that, I want whiskey, I want dope, I want sex, I want whatever. Duly noted. Now sit down over there and shut up. Desires has nothing. There's no satisfaction. There's no fulfillment to be found in the heart of the person who has rejected the only hope there is in this world. What's his name? The hope. Jesus. I'm going to keep saying it until I get it right. Okay, so, so. So the soul of the slothful, of the sluggard, of the lazy man who desires and he has nothing but the soul, the heart, the mind, the inner man of the diligent, the one who, I mean, we're not talking about somebody that is a workaholic like me, which just feels like he's got to get it all done right now. We're talking about someone who's faithful, who stays after it, who doesn't quit. When it gets hard, we keep going. We keep showing up. When my singing stinks, I show up anyway. When my preaching stinks, I show up anyway. When my counseling stinks, I show up anyway. Diligent. Does that, does that help illustrate what diligent is? We're faithful. We keep on coming back because after all, it's his power that does the changing. It's his power that renews the spirit of our mind, the attitude of our mind, the way we think about things, the way we view the world. Diligent, faithful, we keep coming back. I don't have to be Alex Van Halen to be useful on Calvary Chapel's drums. 
I'm not trying to make this about me. All I know is to apply it the way I'm understanding it. You, you, I want you to make your own application. What, you don't have to be a drummer to make this work. Whatever it is that you do, do it faithfully with diligence. Don't quit. Don't get slothful. Don't get lazy. Just keep coming back. When I started going to AA, when I first got here, those guys didn't point out and magnify everything that was wrong with me. They said, just keep coming back. Just keep coming back. Sooner or later, the Lord is going to give you something that you need, and it's going to click. So just keep coming back. That's what I learned that applies here at the church, too. Sooner or later, the Lord's going to give you what you need, and it's going to click. So just keep coming back. And that is diligence, and that is faithfulness. We don't, we, 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 we've gotten really bad in this country about coming in the door of the church, and we're going, eh, you know, you know, I, eh, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's not my preference. Alan Jackson is a preacher down in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. He went to a grocery store. He looked. He saw. said they had 14 different kinds of mustard. He said, the Lord gave me a revelation. I came to this conclusion. That here in the United States of America, we're so spoiled we've forgotten how to be thankful. So self-centered. I'm not trying to beat you up, talk bad to you. The kingdom of God is wooing us to be faithful, diligent servants who have what they need in their heart to guard the mouth and preserve our life, not for the here and now, not for a better outcome on earth, but for eternity in heaven so we can spend eternity with God. How many want that? So the soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent will be made rich. You know, that doesn't have anything to do with money. That word, actually, it means absolutely filled. <laughs> What was that you taught out of this morning that meant absolute, abundant life, wasn't it? Absolutely filled to overflow it. Jesus said, I'll give you a good measure. Shaken, pressed down, running over, filled of life. And we're like, yeah, well... You had some different kind of, you know, maybe a different music style. Maybe you didn't use that translation. I don't really like the way you say it. You're a little too loud for me. You're a little too soft for me. Paul asked the Corinthians, is Christ divided? One of you says, I follow Paul. The other says, I follow Cephas. The other one says, I follow Apollos. Is Christ divided? Come on, man. Do you want to preserve your life? Because it's not done externally. You can't change the group that you're affiliated with or the words that you say over a meal. Can't change the denomination. Well, I'm a little more charismatic. Okay, God bless you. The last time I checked, we're all serving the same kingdom. We're all serving the same Lord. So get in where you fit in and be diligent because you need what you need on the inside to guard this to preserve your life for eternity with him. Now, okay, call it what you will. That's, that's not my quitting spot. It's not marked on the paper right here, but I believe the Holy Spirit said, all right, we're done. So we're done. 
I, I don't know if you got what you needed here tonight. I asked the Lord. You told Peter when you restored him to feed your sheep. I can't do that without you. Will you help me feed your sheep? I hope you got fed. I hope you were fed something. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, that's what I was talking about, about I had to get satisfied with wanting because the satisfaction is not found in the things that the flesh desires. The satisfaction is found when we let the light in. Good point. Thank you for, thank you. Anybody else? Well, I thought I just did. You want more? <laughs> yeah. Well, Paul said it in the Galatians. He said, walk according to the Spirit, and then you won't fulfill or carry out the desires of the flesh. There's a division there. There's a hostility. There's a conflict there. I'm so used to hearing what my brain and my flesh, the immoral part of me, wants. And I've chased that for so long that it's a lot more familiar to me. And so like Brian said, what I need to do when I've got these wantings, these longings, these cravings, and these things, and I know that doesn't line up with the Word of God, what I do is turn to God. And I say, look, I'm, 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 I'm needing something here. I'm craving something here. I know by experience that these things won't satisfy me. They won't give me the fulfillment that I'm looking for. So I'm asking you. I still have a, if I think about it just for a few minutes, I can drum up the taste just by memory. Well, it, 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 it gets less relevant the more faithful I am. To serve with the gifts that he's given me in the ministries that he's provided and trusting him for the manifestations that are needed to save my soul. Yeah, diligence. D walk be diligent, faithful, walking according to the Spirit, not the flesh. It's not comfortable at first because I'm used to this. But I've got to get used to this. I've got to be renewed in the spirit of my mind so that I can find true satisfaction and fulfillment. I wish I could tell you that I've arrived, but I haven't. But I'm learning. I hope we're all learning to be diligent in choosing. I said that pretty good. <laughs> choosing the spirit rather than the flesh. Does that help? Did, did you get what you were looking for? We, we, we ganged up on you, but okay, okay, okay. All right, cool. So let's pray. Sing one last song. And let's get out of here a few minutes early tonight. What do you think? Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this family that you've given us. You've blessed us abundantly. Yeah. You've given us hope. And you've given us joy. And you've given us peace. You've given us satisfaction and fulfillment. You're renewing the spirit of our minds. You're... 
You're changing us from the inside out. You're allowing your light to fill our hearts, cast out the darkness, Lord, and we praise you for it here tonight. We thank you for it here tonight, Lord. It's our hope. It's all we have in this world that gives us hope. And we pray that the light that has entered into our hearts will rise, that the glory of the Lord will rise up among us. And we're going to sing about that in this last song. And Lord, we praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.